Your times and seasons, the good, the bad, and the not so pretty, are firmly in God's hand. God has designed a personalized roller coaster ride for each and every one of us. This is your life, given to you by your Maker, your Father in heaven. The ups, the downs, the wicked loop de loops, the evil, hard, fast right turns in life that come out of nowhere, they are all a part of God's experiential plan for you. No matter what the ride brings you, your seasons, your times, and you are in his hand. David, that guy who killed that giant Goliath, experienced the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. The death of a child, enemies from within his own immediate family, enemies from outside of his family. Yet he understood it was all part of God's plan for him. And he trusted God with every twist and turn that came his way. In Psalm 31:15, we read these words of David in a prayer to God. In your hand are my seasons. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those pursuing me. The first part of this verse is a prayer God hears from me many times per day. In your hand are my seasons. And as with David, I usually say it when the brown smelly stuff is hitting the fan with great velocity. The man who cut off Goliath's big smelly sweaty head was not always experiencing the mountaintop of victory in his life. Oftentimes he was literally running for his life as his enemies sought to kill him. But he trusted God and he knew God was in control. So just as David was in God's hand and his seasons were in God's hand, so too are you and your seasons, the ups and the downs and everything that you experience in this life. God's plans for you were set long before you were even created in your mama's belly. In Psalm 139.16, we read these words in a prayer from David to God. Your eyes saw my embryo. And my days, all of them, were written upon your scroll. The days they were formed when there was not one of them. We see here that God prepared and formed the days of David before he put David into the days. Just as God prepared the roller coaster of your life before he placed you on it, God has had plans for you since long before he ever created you. God's plans for each and every one of us include good and evil in our lives. God is the creator of both good and evil, according to Isaiah 45, 7. Former of light and creator of darkness, maker of good and creator of evil, I, Yahweh, make all these things. Jesus reinforced this truth of the continual evil in our lives that we all know too well from experience. In Matthew 6, 34, we read the words of Jesus, you should not then be worrying about the morrow, for the morrow will be worrying of itself. Sufficient for the day is its own evil. Every single day has a measure of evil that God has measured out ahead of time in each and every one of our lives. But this evil has a purpose in his plans for us. So God has all of this planned out for us. Then he meticulously forms us for nine months inside of our mother's belly. Then, without our permission, usually head first, he forces us into this world. To your no but he does this with a terrific goal for each and every one of us. This amazing passage from Acts 17, 25 through 28 reveals so much to us about God's planning, provision, and production of all that we are. God himself gives to all life and breath and all. Besides, he makes out of one every nation of mankind to be dwelling on all the surface of the earth, specifying the setting of the seasons and the bounds of their dwelling for them to be seeking God. If consequently, they may surely grope for him and may be finding him, though to be sure not far from each one of us is he inherent, for in him we are living and moving and are. We see very clearly here that God gives to all life and breath and all. Everything that we have is from him. We all come from Adam, so technically we are all cousins. And I guess ever since then it's been one big family feud. And he has determined that we dwell upon the surface of the earth. He determined all of these things beforehand. Why? So that we would be seeking God in verse 26. And 
so that we would grope for him and be finding him. He is so near to each one of us. And it is only through him that we are living and moving and are. Always keep in mind that you are just a lump of clay. And you can do nothing. You can't live, you can't breathe, you can't do good, you can't do bad, apart from God the potter. So God planned the perfect time to place you on the earth at the exact location with your parents, with your skin color, your height, your foot size, everything about you for a purpose and a reason. Now, did God just leave you after that and now you're on your own? Well, that's an impossibility for, like we just said, in him we live and move and are. The potter has to keep his hands on the clay to keep forming the clay. So God has not left you. You may feel at times that God has left you, but I want to assure you and encourage you, he has not. No matter what season or seasons are occurring in your life right now. Life normally consists of four general seasons. We have birth, we have growing up, growing old, and death. And many people refer to these similar to the seasons in nature. We have the spring, the summer, the fall, and the winter season of life right before we die. And through these general seasons, there are all kinds of ups and downs and twists and turns that God throws at us on our individual roller coaster of life. And quite thankfully, it's good that God has dimly lit our roller coaster ride. And in most of it, we're actually roller coastering in the dark. We don't know what's ahead. We don't know what the next second is going to bring. So it's almost like this roller coaster ride we're going through blind. And that's probably a good thing. Do you want to know everything that's going to come at you second by second? Do you want to know when a loved one is going to die? Do you want to know how you are going to die? Do you want to know all these things that are coming at you? Obviously, we'd like to know the good things, but the bad things, we'd rather just not even think about those things. And God, in his grace and his mercy, has allowed us to not see those things. So we have the big seasons of life, but God also provides us smaller seasons. The season isn't always a long time within your life. Sometimes it's excruciatingly too long. Sometimes it's not long enough when good things are happening. But God does provide us with a scripture passage that gives us some specifics in the seasons that God provides for us and why he provides them for us. God has prepared all these seasons for us for a purpose. And all of this is based on his love for us. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 11, written by Solomon, the wise man. For everything there is a stated time and a season for every event under the heavens. A season to give birth and a season to die. A season to plant and a season to chop down what is planted. A season to kill and a season to heal. A season to breach and a season to build. A season to weep and a season to make merry. A season of wailing and a season of dancing. A season to fling away stones and a season to collect stones together. A season to embrace and a season to stay far away from embracing. A season to seek and a season to count as lost. A season to keep and a season to fling away. A season to tear and a season to sow. A season to hush and a season to speak. A season to love and a season to hate. A season of war and a season of peace. I see the experience that God gives to the sons of humanity to humble them by it. He has made everything fitting in its season. However, he has put obscurity in their heart, so that the man may not find out his work, that which the one God does from the beginning to the end. So no matter what you've gone through, what you're going through, what you're going to go through, this smorgasbord of seasons that God provides for us makes each and every one of us uniquely and individually who we are. And every single experience we have has a purpose because God is controlling it and God does things with a purpose in mind. The purpose stated for all these seasons in our lives is to humble us, to humble humanity, to humble each and every one of us. But humbling is not the final goal. Humbling is a step in the process towards God's final goal for each and every one of us. Here is the ultimate goal for him 
humbling us. The Apostle Peter says in 1 Peter 5.5, 5, God is resisting the proud, yet is giving grace to the humble. Our humility that God brings to us leads us to Him giving us grace. Ephesians 2.8, For in grace through faith are you saved, and this is not out of you, it is God's approach present. Everything that God does is leading up to our salvation. The humbling, the grace, and the salvation are all working together, and God brings us to these through the seasons of our lives. We've all had crushing seasons in life. Maybe you're in a crushing season right now in your life. I want to encourage you with this passage from the Word of God that hopefully will lift you up and realize that God not only brought this into your life, but He's with you through it. Isaiah 57:15. For thus says the one high and lifted up, who tabernacles the future, and holy is His name. In the high and holy place am I tabernacling, and also with one crushed and lowly of spirit, to revive the spirit of the lowly, and to revive the heart of the crushed. What an awesome promise from your Heavenly Father to you. My hope is that this video has brought you encouragement, even in the hard times of life that God brings into your life, and that you too can say with me and with David, my seasons are in your hand. To learn the truth of the most damaging Bible mistranslation, I invite you to watch this video next.